Let us begin our worship this morning, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus be with us. One announcement that we have is that if you would please continue to wear your masks while you're in the sanctuary, and if you have a phone, please put it on mute. Also, some of you, hopefully all of you, saw the, the message that said that the service for the summer will be starting at 9. That has now changed, and we will be keeping the 10 o'clock time. So if you wrote 9 o'clock on your calendar, please do change it. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of Almighty God.
after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 30 days, of 40 days, and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized. <clears throat> with the Holy Spirit. And then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The reading and the hearing of God's word is good news for us this morning. Let's bow in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning with expectant hearts, open minds, ready to hear your word and how it speaks to us. It is a prayer this morning that your word would so enlighten our hearts that we would know truth has been spoken. In Jesus' name, ask this. Amen. It is without a doubt a happy one of the happiest times we can have as we approach perhaps the very end of this pandemic. And in the midst and in the wave of all of the things that have been a part of this pandemic, being together with those we care for and love, being able to, uh, to share in close proximity with them and in celebrations and all sorts of things hasn't been possible. But that door is beginning to open wider now and all of those things which we previously enjoyed, hopefully very soon we will enjoy again. One of the things that I loved and had really planned on doing was on the occasion of my mother's 85th uh, birthday, which was this January, this past January, was going to have a birthday party for her at her church. Unfortunately, because of COVID and all of the complications, we weren't able to do that. But I'm really looking forward to next year and doing it then. So that, that celebration will be a great one where all of her friends will be able to be there and to acknowledge her birthday. As I think about birthdays, I also think about uh, my, my daughter when she was growing up and all the birthday parties that we had for her. And uh, a lot of them were just simple little things at the house where people would come. But on our 16th birthday, for a sweet 16th, we wanted to do something special. And so one of the hotels uh, where we were near had a special package. And uh, you could rent out one of their areas in the hotel and uh, enjoy dancing and all of that. And then go on over to uh, the pool and enjoy that. They also put up on their great big billboards outside in lights a picture of her so that everybody in town could see that it was a birthday. It was a wonderful special occasion that she remembers even to this day. But why am I talking a whole lot about birthdays? Well, it's because next Sunday, next Sunday is the birthday of the church. And it's a day in which Protestants and especially us as Presbyterians celebrate as that day in which the church began. And so next Sunday is our birthday Sunday, and it's a special time, and it should be a special time of celebration. Uh, wearing red next Sunday is just one way that we're going to celebrate here at St. Andrews, but hopefully you'll have that spirit of celebration in your hearts as you come next Sunday. But as we prepare for that kind of celebration, I just want us to think about some things that perhaps we may need to do to get ready for that celebration, as we get ready for that experience of Pentecost that should and could happen to us in our lives as we hear from 
the Holy Scriptures. The first thing that we might want to give some consideration to is to consider His power. Joel says in the Old Testament, in Joel 2.20, he says, One day, one day, I'm going to pour out my Spirit upon all. And what Jesus tells the apostles is this. That one day, it's coming soon. That one day when He's going to pour out the power of who He is on the people. It's coming. He wanted them to be prepared for that. Did you ever really quite imagine how God took these ordinary men, kind of stumbling and bubbling and doing all of the things that they did, how suddenly somehow they could become so bold and so courageous in what they were doing, so incredibly lacking of fear or lacking in, in, in any of the things that would, would take away from the gospel. They were ignited by the fire of God's power in their lives. Now, when we think about power, we think about some, some things. Have you ever been powerless in your life? And one time, I... Uh, I ran out of stuff for the dishwasher, and I took the dishwashing detergent, and you know what's coming, kind of don't you? I put it in, I filled it up, and I turned it on. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that's powerless, okay? That is powerless. Power, powerlessness is a terrible thing, and certainly these disciples felt that in their lives, especially following Jesus' death. When, when Jesus told them to, to wait there in Jerusalem, they weren't just waiting. They were pretty much locked up and hiding. And it wasn't until Pentecost that they received the kind of power that enables them to go forward in their lives. Powerlessness is a terrible thing. Right? You know, if you go down Route 17, uh, somewhere between uh, Gloucester uh, Courthouse and Gloucester Point, you'll see a church on the right-hand side by the name of Susanna Wesley Church, which many years ago, in a different life, I started. And uh, we, we started in an empty bean field there with uh, just uh, trailer units uh, that were there. And then, then we were able to build this multi-million dollar facility that's, that's present there now. And uh, on the very first year that we got into the facility, we wanted to, to, to continue to grow and to, and, and to do new things. And uh, so that, that first Easter, I remember, we, we, we grew... Uh, from little larvae, these beautiful butterflies, and then on Easter Sunday, we released them uh, to everyone. Uh, on Palm Sunday, before that, we, uh, we had a donkey, and all the children could come and see the donkey, and all of those sorts of things. So we did a lot of those kind of things, and on, on Pentecost Sunday, I had this idea of, uh, we would have these doves, and I had them in a little cage, and we were gonna release them uh, following the service outside. Well, unfortunately, somehow, some way, one of those little doves got loose, got out of the cage, and we had a pretty high ceiling, kind of like this, and uh, it was, you know, the bad part about it is we had chairs. They were navy, navy blue cloth chairs. <laughs> and that dove, I'm pretty sure, must have targeted every chair in that facility. So. So anyway, that didn't work out. You talk about powerless. There you go. We couldn't even, finally, we opened the window, you finally flew out. That was the good news. But the, uh, the committee then said, you know, next year, why don't we do Pentecost outside? <laughs> okay, so we did, we did. We, we did that too. We, the, the next year, we had an outdoor service for Pentecost Sunday. And uh, it was good because I think at that time it was uh, uh, in, in June, not so much in May. And uh, it was pretty warm, so it was a, it was a perfect day. And uh, of course, I had my 
myself and the worship leader and the liturgist, we all drove up together to the staging area in a car. Of course, it was a Honda. It was a Honda Accord because they were all in one Accord, right? Yeah. yeah. But we really did that. <laughs> Powerlessness was an issue for the apostles, these disciples, who have now suddenly been called not just to be what they are, but to be something more than what they are. They have been called to be witnesses there in Jerusalem and the city, but then in other outer parts of Judea and Samaria, where some hostility would lie, and then to other places they didn't even know about. That was, that was their call. And that was their need for power in their lives. So this morning, as we think about Pentecost, we need to consider his power. And really, the purpose of that power. Because here's something that's true. And I think probably you all know that it's true. You don't take a great big, powerful locomotive and hook it up to pull a little red wagon. Hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Neither does God. So He has called us in this unique way to be His witnesses in the worlds in which we live. And the resource that he gives to us to do that is his power in our lives. We need to consider his power as we are preparing for Pentecost. We also we need to consider his vision. And his vision is this, that, that we would, yes, be those witnesses in the everydayness of our lives. We are called to be those kind of witnesses. It's a unbelievable call and a challenge. This is the fifth time now that, that this word has gone out that we are to be his witnesses. It's the fifth time that Jesus has talked about this great commission that, that is ours as God's church. And he is making that call for us, even today, to be his witnesses. All of the warmth and the fellowship, the support, the camaraderie, the fellowship, all of those things that we have here, and they are wonderful here. And there's so much missed. How much have we missed one another being together in this place? All of those things are so blessed and so wonderful, but it's not the purpose for which God has called us to. Purpose, singular purpose that God has called us to is to be His witnesses. All the other things are the byproducts of our obedience to God. But His call to us is to be His witnesses. And as we think of the Pentecost that's coming next Sunday, let me tell you about a, a primitive tribe. Uh, they had found this valley, and it was filled with wonderful wild game. The soil was magnificent and grew wonderful crops. The water would run clean and fresh. But after a period of time, the soil seemed to be all used up. The animals were scarce. The water became polluted. And so there was a whisper, kind of a thought, that, that maybe over on the, on the other side of the mountain, there might be another valley that would be better suited for them now. And so some young uh, members of the tribe go and they see and they come back and report and they all vote together to say yes let's do that let's go 
And so they, they travel a journey over the mountain to this new valley, and there it is filled with new soil, and all kinds of animals, and fresh waters. And they enjoy that new habitat, that new location, for generation upon generation until finally the same thing happens again. And again, there's a whisper that over on the next mountain, just beyond it, there's another valley that would be perfect for them, filled with those same things that they looked for before. But now, we're gone in the place where they were. And so the tribe gathered together, and, and yet, they said, no, it's too scary. It would take too much from us. So they stayed where they were, and the tribe soon vanished. The scriptures are right. People without a vision perish. The same people who once said yes were now saying no. This morning, God's vision to us to be his witnesses is for us to affirm and to take up. That is the call. That is the reason for the power. That is the hookup. And the cost. It's coming for us. You see, we must consider His power. We must consider His vision. We also, based on the scripture this morning, we must Consider this. We must consider His presence. The promise was this. The promise was that, that, that Jesus said, I am going to sit at the right hand of God. I am going to be with the Father. But I will send you another, a paraclete, one called alongside to help, a comforter, a counselor for you. And that's really what the Holy Spirit is for us as Christians. It is the presence of God in the hearts of His followers. The presence of Christ in the hearts of His followers. That's the Holy Spirit. And you see this morning, it is that same presence it has opportunity to live in you and me. That presence came on the day of Pentecost. It was as if lightning struck, or there was a mighty rush of wind, or, or a tongue of fire, but that's how it came. And when it came to them, they were open to what God wanted to do in them. So the question begins for us. Are we open to the way in which God wants to show His presence to us in our lives? Most of you know that I, uh, I lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma for about four years, and, and one of the things that I like are our names, and uh, I found out the origin of the name for Tulsa, and it came from an event, a very sad event in the history of our country. Uh, for our Native American uh, friends and families. It was called the Trail of Tears. And what we know is that the Creek Indians there in what is called Tulsi Town, Alabama, took the ashes of, of, of their land and of, of their places, and they took those with them as they traveled along this Trail of Tears to this new place this new settlement in Oklahoma. And that's how Tulsa got its name. You see, they took the fire and the ashes from the old and brought it to the new place. It's the same thing that uh, the Israelites were asked to do as well. Where you see, they were called to always have a fire that would represent the presence of God to them. It even tells us in Luke 9, 20, 
24 that in Leviticus rather, uh, Leviticus 9, 24, that that these this fire really was kindled from heaven. And so it is this same fire that sets down upon those who are gathered, these disciples, on Pentecost Sunday. Because you see, they had become the new bearers of the ancient light. And so today have we, we now, we are the new bearers of that old, old fire. So let me ask you concerning God's presence this morning. I'll show you in maybe a simple way. Container. It's, I hope, what do you say? Do you think that's full of blocks? I, I, I can add a few more. I got some more here. I can add some more. Jim, what do you say, Jim? Pretty full? Okay, good. All right. Well, you think it's full, huh? Well, I've got these little beads. You say it's full now? I'm spilling them all over. Aren't you glad? I, see, I this is originally was with sand and other things. So I made it nice for you guys. You like that? Okay. Did you say it's full? Well, see, so you're getting a little smarter now, <laughs> right? Uh, I could uh, pour this, and it would take that too. Here's the point. Yes. At some point in our lives, we have received the very presence of God in our lives and lives. But it isn't just about one time. It's about this question that we'll be asking next week, and that is, are we filled? Have we been filled again and again and again? Because that's the way the scriptures and Acts talk about the Holy Spirit, that it's not just one time that we are constantly being filled and renewed with the presence of God in our lives. So this morning, as we consider His power, as we consider His vision, as we consider His presence, it makes us take pause for a moment. As we prepare for what Pentecost could mean for us as God's people, and for our church, and for the legacy that He wants us to have. Because you understand, legacies aren't just based on what you've done, but also on what you do next. So God is calling each of us individually and as a church. To claim these things in our lives. Let's pause as we bow together this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of being together in this place. And we thank you for your spirit that is alive now and that we will celebrate next Sunday in a most wonderful way. And it is our prayer, O oh God, that we will be ready to be your called out ones, your ecclesia, your people of faith who live the faith in the lives that they have. Be with us, O oh God. Help us to know that it is the power of your Holy Spirit that calls us out, that calls us to great things in the kingdom. Jesus, thank you. Ask him. Amen.
bow with me as we bow together in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning, and we come acknowledging a sense of new beginning, a source of new expectation, and just an overwhelming sense of gladness in our hearts and lives as, as perhaps we've turned the corner and new things that seem old are coming to us. We're so thankful, oh God, for your presence and protection throughout this time. Aware and alert that others have lost loved ones, but alert as well that in the midst of all things, you hold all of life and you hold us infinite in the very palm of your hand. And so we are thankful and we recognize our blessing. This morning we pray for those who cannot be with us. We pray for those who are at home. We pray for others who are dealing with other things as a result of other experiences of life. We know this, O oh God, that you are our hope and that we can trust in you because you care for us. So we do this morning. We cast our cares upon you. This morning as well, God, we are thankful for the blessings that you've given to all of us. And we ask this morning that you continue to be present in our midst and in especially in our celebrations as we worship together as a family of faith. And we pray, O oh God, this day, that you would teach us to pray by those of us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our prayer, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. This morning I'm going to invite you to stand as we close with our benediction together as God's family. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we prepare our hearts now for the celebration that is to come, the Pentecost that will come and find us ready to take up your call to be witnesses, to be your church, to do as you have called us to do. We thank you for your word, O oh God, that speaks so directly to us. Most of all, O oh God, we thank you for your love, for the height and depth, for the length and the width of your love toward us. And it is our prayer, O oh God, that our roots, our roots would grow down deep into the soil of your marvelous love. Amen. Amen. <laughs>